All right, so this is applying all your knowledge of Redox and putting it together. So it's, this is um, yeah, the more challenging things on the exam. It's not a big section of the course, but um, it does come up more and more, especially last year, the year before, the year before that, the new study design. A lot more of this is on the exam. Okay, they're asking you to investigate the batteries, describe the batteries, talk about battery performance, talk about um, what kind of uh, reactions are occurring in this battery in, in an alkaline form and in, a, in an acidic form. So this year, more challenging synthesis of content, putting all the ideas together. Um, and again, if you want to hit that A+, plus, you need to nail these questions. So it's confusing, it's, it's challenging, it takes time. Right? The fact that you're going through it now is excellent. You're already putting yourself ahead. You're exposing yourself to it. So primary cells, primary, meaning it can't be recharged. So these batteries here that we use for our Rove mics, the mics that are on my lapel here, this one here, right? that battery cannot be recharged. Okay, If you look at it, it doesn't say rechargeable. They're just double A lithium ion, uh, I believe, is it? Uh, anyway, it's some sort of, it's an alkaline battery, I think. Yeah, it's an alkaline battery. If you look closely, wait till it focuses. No, it doesn't want to focus. Anyway, it, trust me, it's an alkaline battery. It's a primary cell, can't be recharged. Rechargeable batteries, you get your phone out, those batteries can be recharged. Okay, it's not just a flex on my phone. Okay, it just, it was the quickest thing I had right in front of me that I could do. So, no, it's not, it's not a flex. Okay, Samsung's better than Apple. Secondary cell, they can be recharged. So you put energy back into it to recharge it. So it's exactly the same as a galvanic cell. You got an anode, you got a cathode, you've got an internal circuit, which is a salt bridge, but not exactly a piece of paper. A bit more fancy than that, because paper can ignite. Okay, Samsung S7, you know, blow up and all that. And an external circuit. So here's an example of a battery. Uh, what have we got? We've got I'm just checking the type battery we've got. It's a zinc, it's a, it's a nickel hydroxide battery. We like this one in chemistry, in VC chemistry. So if you cut the battery, don't cut it at home, but if you were to cut it, it's very dangerous, don't do it. If you were to cut the battery, um, there's actually a, a, a fire truck, that, uh, not a fire truck, a garbage truck, someone disposed of batteries in the bin. And um, you don't need to memorize the reactions, you need to know the, you need to know what's happened, but you don't need to memorize the reactions, definitely don't. So yeah, there was a look it up. It was in I think it was in Melbourne, and there was someone threw batteries away in their in their in their rubbish bin. It, it says don't throw it away in the rubbish bin because when they get hot, they expand, they explode, and this uh this this garbage truck caught on fire and had to dump the garbage trucks all of its waste. Had to dump it in a car park, and the fire brigade came, and don't get battery and scissors, and the fire brigade came out to put the, the garbage out. It was like hot garbage. It would have smelled so bad. I can't remember where it was, but there was yeah somewhere. Anyway. Interesting, I thought. So nickel hydroxide is what's on the cathode. So or nickel O and then OH there. And then we have a separator, which literally just separates the cathode from the anode. I'll go through why. The, um, the anode is cadmium, so C, um, CD is the metal, and a separator again. This is the positive electrode. So this must be the cathode, because it's a galvanic cell. And this must be the anode. All right, so here's another example of the, of the cell. So here's what's happening. Zinc is being converted to zinc two plus, plus two electrons. So label the anode. Uh, where are we? Sorry, over here. So zinc is the electrode here. So this must be the anode. How do I know that? How do we come to that? How do I know the zinc was the anode? Yeah, zinc undergoes oxidation, excellent. So it goes from a zero oxidation number to a plus two oxidation number. And then, so this electrode up here is the carbon electrode, which must be the cathode. So at the cathode, we're having this manganese combined with um, uh, ammonium and, and zinc, and then form this manganese dioxide plus nit uh, nitrous oxide. And yeah, I have to know this stuff, that's right. I have to know the batteries, but yeah, you're not expected to know this battery, definitely not. If you're given the equation, you're expected to be able to apply, but not know the battery. There's way too many batteries to know. 
The carbon electrode is a good question. So it's it's a it's a non-reactive electrode, okay? So it's in uh, inert, but it's it just provides a site for oxidation or for reduction. So it provides a site for reduction, but it doesn't participate in the reaction. But carbon is, is a conductive um, material, so like your graphite pencils. If you use a 2B pencil or just a pencil, a grey lead pencil, that conducts electricity but doesn't react with anything in the electrochemical series. It's non-reactive. So we use that. So it doesn't react but it, um, it's cheap and it conducts electricity. All right, so we're going to go and write the reduction reaction. So how to do that aside oxidation numbers. So you can see that zinc goes from 0 to plus 2. So as you get quicker at it and better at it, it already tells us the zinc is undergoing oxidation. So we're pretty sure zinc is not going to be involved in the reaction that we want. So now we have to go and we have to look, well, what is undergoing reduction? So you go through and assign it, negative 2 oxygen, overall negative 4, therefore manganese plus 4. We did this before. What's the charge on the nitrogen in this ammonium? What's the charge on this nitrogen in this ammonium compound? Minus three. So nitrogen's minus three over there. We've got minus two. There's six oxygens in the total compound. Manganese would therefore have a minus three charge individually, wouldn't it? So overall be minus six. Then we've got nitrogen over here, plus one for hydrogen, plus three. Overall, minus 3, minus 3 overall. We've got water, minus 2 for oxygen, plus 1 for hydrogen, plus 2 overall, and minus 2 overall. So can you see, that? just to re recap, the top line is the overall contribution or overall charge. And then the bottom line is the individual charge. So you write, you, when you're talking about oxidation or reduction, you write the individual charge. So you use this to describe oxidation or reduction. And you had to do that last year as well. You've got to use the individual charge, not the cumulative or the sum. No, no, you don't have to put it on top or bottom. I just did it from the start and so I'm trying to do the same thing each time. So it's very clear to you what I'm doing, okay? You don't have to do the overall on top, you could do it on the bottom, that's fine. Just be consistent, that's all. Uh, plus six, yes, plus three. Good pick up, thanks. All right, so now we go and we look at Mn, so it starts as minus four, and what does it finish as? Then we have oxygen, starts as minus two, and finishes as, and then we have Nitrogen and hydrogen. So what does nitrogen start as? One question at a time, Alex. So Mn, manganese. What does manganese start as? Minus four, plus four, plus four. And what does it end as? Plus six, good one. So it's undergone oxidation, hasn't it? Because it's more positive. Oxygen started as minus two, because we go through, remember we, we do the single element, we do the minus two. And what did oxygen end as? So no change. Yeah. So oxygen started as minus two and finishes minus two. We don't look at the overall charge, you look at the single charge, the individual charge on the atom. Three plus. Yeah, correct. So the individual charge is on the bottom and the cumulative or the sum of all charges on the top. Yeah, if, if, sure. If you find the overall charge a waste of time, that's fine. You don't need to do that. It's just there to, to show you. That's fair enough. So nitrogen, what does nitrogen start as? What's the charge of nitrogen?
Yep, there could be multiple oxygens, but they're always minus two though. Oxygen's always minus two. Never changes to minus two. So nitrogen starts as minus three, and then what does it finish as? No, that's it's pretty rare for that to happen, Sheena. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. See, I confuse myself with these. Uh, maybe that's why it's better. All right. So, what do we have for nitrogen? Does nitrogen change? Minus three to minus three, doesn't it? So no change. And then hydrogen starts as plus one and finishes as plus one. So no change. So now we're just going to write the overall reduction equation. So it's MnO2, which goes to Mn2O3. Now, remember this battery. Cool. So what do we need to do to balance the equation? Well, we need to do K-O-H-E-S. K-O-H-E and then S. So balance key elements. So there are two manganese on the left, so we need to do two on the right. That's step one. Step two, we've got two manganese there going to this. What's the next step that we need to do? Add H2O to which side? To the left, so add water, one lots of water. Now we've got three oxygens on the left and three on the right. Now what do I need to do? So we've done that, done that. What's next? Add hydrogen ions to the right. How many? Two, awesome. No states yet, not really relevant. And then, what do I need to do? So we're up to E, electrons. So we look at the charge. MnO2 plus water, there's no charge on the left, zero. And then on the right hand side, there's a two positive charge. Water on the other side, yeah. So why do we need to add, why do we need to add water to the other side? What happened here? Hmm? So if you look, when we balance key elements, which is back here, when we balance key elements, yeah, now we've got two lots of oxygen, which is four. So now we have four oxygen on the left and three on the right, don't we? So instead of adding water on the left, should it not be on the right, which is what people were saying? So adding one lot of water to the, to the um, here. And then, so there's no longer a plus there, now that we have water, yeah, now we add two hydrogens to the left to balance the hydrogens. And then what do you do? Then you balance electrons. Okay, we'll go through it again. Okay, so first step. First step, back to the start. MnO2, so there's no number two there. So imagine putting your hand in front of the two. Okay, so this two doesn't exist for the moment. We finish with Mn2O3. There are two manganese ions, so we need to balance manganese ions. So we put a two in front. Now there are four oxygens on the left and three on the right. So we balance that by adding an extra oxygen by adding water to the right. Then now we have an unbalanced of the hydrogen ions, so we add hydrogen ions to the left. And then we have an unbalanced in charge, so we add hydrogen ions plus electrons to the left. And now what do we need to do? What's the final thing? Why can't chemistry be simple? 
well, it's not meant to be an easy subject. Yeah, it takes a while to get used to it. This is the first time you've seen it, remember? That's why I spend a bit more time on it as well. MN203, and that was solid, wasn't it? Yeah, to go back here, you see the state up here is solid. That's a solid plus H2O liquid. There's our balanced equation. And we just showed that it's being reduced in the previous one. All right, so there's another battery. Practice that. That's a good one to practice.